Today we're going to talk about Power 1000 and Rockford Fosgate. Yes, with old school Power 1000s go back to 1988. As seen here in the audio magazine special car stereo issue, you can see Power 1000 here, $2,500. 150 watts by 4. We also have some literature here from the original Power 1000s. And you can see 500 watts by 2 at 4 ohms or 150 by 4 at 4 ohms. There's also a newer version, the Power 1000C, which had the LED VU meters. You can check the video description. I have a link showing this amp in action as well. Back in 1991, Car Audio and Electronics tested this amplifier, the Power 1000C, along with four other classic amplifiers, called this five biggest and most powerful amplifiers ever built up till 1991. Here you can see the prices of all of them, around $2,000, a little bit more dollars, crazy price. Again, this is 1991, so we are talking, you know, almost 30 years ago. The Power 1000 came in second place, and with the price of $2,650 in 1991, that equates to around $5,100 in 2020. Insane. So knowing 2005 will be the 25th anniversary of Rockford Fosgate, which started in 1980, they decided to come out with a model called 25 to Life. There's Punch 45, Punch 75, Punch 150, and also the Power 1000 model. Here you can see some of the literature we found from way back then. Really cool, had retro designs on all the amps. And the Power 1000 was $1499, which equates to about $1950 today. So here we're going to show off the Power 1000 25 to Life. We have model number 2174 of 2500 each different model they made 2500 of them so here is the amp you can see it's gorgeous now let's check out all the accessories first off you get the punch parametric bass eq which had a frequency of 35 to 70 hertz a boost of 0 to 18 db very nice this came with the amp in addition you got a t-shirt and i have one here unopened which i open it just for you guys Size extra large. It says 25 to life. Has the really cool logo on the back. Here's a closer up look at the logo. 1980 to 2005, 25 to life. And you also got a snap-on screwdriver, which I don't have. Thanks to my buddy Sean K for letting me show you this. And you got a burst sheet. But guess what? Big D's didn't have a burst sheet, but you know how I roll. I'm going to do even better than the Rockford burst sheet. I'm going to do my own with my own amp dyno, and you'll see that coming up. Here you can see the amp rated 50 by 4, up to 300 by 2 for the 4 channel mode, and then up to 800 by 1 on the sub channel. Now we'll check the dimensions. You can see this is a big amp, 23 inches by 12.8 inches. So a huge footprint, and then it's about 2.6 inches or 66 millimeters on the height side. And yeah, here's all the different connections. You can see the left front, right front, left rear, right rear, and the sub channel for speakers. Those are all 8 gauge. Then we have the controls for the sub, including the frequency, a sub gain, also an infrasonic filter, switch between 5-channel, 4-channel, and 2-channel input. And then we have the front gain, a frequency multiplier, crossover for the front, a slope for the front, as well as the frequency itself. We have the different 5.1 inputs. And then we have the rear channel, which also has the crossover slope, uh, switch for low pass, high pass, or bypass, frequency multiplier, gain, then we have one alt for power and ground, and the remote side will fit it to an 8-gauge, which I don't know why you need one that big. It also has a 250-amp ANL-style fuse built into the amp, which is pretty cool. You don't usually see that with amplifiers, but and this is a unique amp with unique features. Now let's talk about how I hooked it up and how we're going to do the test. Here we have the Power 1000 hooked up to the Dyna with the front channels. As you can see, we have an eight gauge going in. We have the channels bridged. So we're measuring the four channels bridged down to two. On the sub channel, we've got the 1000 watt big dummy load resistors here. Each of those is four ohms. We have them wired in parallel, which gives us two ohms. So we're loading the sub channel down at two ohms for all of the front channel, front and rear channel tests. All right, time to fire up the good old SMD to more engineering amp dyno so we can test out this amp, see how it performs. Yes, it's 15 years old. We don't care. We like to test amps, whether they're new 
whether they're 15 years old, 30 years old, we don't care. First up, we're going to try 8 ohms bridged. Four channels bridged to two. All the channels are loaded down. The sub channel is loaded as well. Rated 100 watts by two. Certified, you can see 163, 173. Easily did the rated power. Uncertified takes us up to clipping. All these tests are done at 40 hertz, unless I tell you otherwise. 172, 171. Again, almost double the rating. In dynamic, we got right at double the rating. 195 watts per channel at 14.18 volts. Next up, we'll try 4 ohms bridge. Again, this is the class AB section of the amp. The front 4 channels bridge to 2, rated 200 watts by 2. Certified run at 40 hertz. Takes us up to 1% THD, right around 250 watts, 249, 257. Uncertified, takes us up to the clipping point. We expect a little more, 272, 271. Very nice dynamic burst. Again, a 40 hertz pulse into the amp, 365, 350. Nice dynamic power on the class AB side. Now the question is, the class D side have that much dynamic power? We'll find out. Unlike most five channel amps, the four channel section of this is bridgeable at two ohms mono or one ohm in stereo channels. Let's try certified, 40 hertz first, rated 300 watts, we got 321, 304. Then we tried it at one kilohertz just to see the difference. Expect a little bit more power because it's easier. 385, 362. Again, easily did the rated power with the sub channel loaded down. Uncertified, 347, 329, 14.1. Dynamic power, look at this. Wow. Closing in on 500 watts per channel. And don't forget, we have the sub loaded at 2 ohms as well. Incredible. All right, so here is the Power 1000 25 to life on the test bench. Show you a little bit about how I've got it hooked up. Have one alt going in to power and ground. We have the crossover for the rear set to bypass, which is the AP mode, which means all pass. We're using only one RCA or two RCA inputs there. Front channels also are bypassed with the AP. We have the channel select set to two channels. And we have the subsonic filter off and the sub frequency up as high as it will go. And as you can see, we have four gauge going in for the sub channel or coming out for the sub channel we have the front channel and the rear channels bridged going into the big dummy load resistors right here these are 1000 watt four ohm resistors so we're bridging the front and rear channels at four ohms which gives a two ohm load for each of the channels this is a one ohm per channel or two ohm bridged capable amplifier but for the resistors we have this is the way we decided to do it but when we test the front channels, we'll test those down to two ohms bridge, which will equal the one ohm load, and we'll see what we get. So yeah, beautiful amp. You can see the VU meters there. I'll show those off later. But anyway, very cool. Let's get to testing. All right, now we're gonna try the subwoofer channel test, Power 1000. This is the class D section. At four ohms, it's rated 300 watts. Certified, we got almost 400. 397 at 14.2. Uncertified, up to clipping. See if we can get over that 400. Yeah, right at it. 400 watts at 14.2 volts. 100 watts over the rated power. Dynamic. Now, this is interesting, what I talked about before. The Class D section here doesn't have as much headroom as the Class AB section because dynamically, we didn't get as much as we did in the other tests. Now... Let's move to the two ohm test where the subwoofer channel is rated to deliver 600 watts. Certified first takes us up to 1% THD. Yes, we got the rating plus more, 662, 14.38. Uncertified up to clipping. Expect to get a little bit more. Very close to 700 watts, 695 at 14.49 volts. Dynamically, again, we got less than the other two modes because all the channels are loaded down. Remember that. So this is not just a sub test. All the channels are loaded. All right, now we'll move on to the one ohm test where the sub channel is rated 800 watts. See if we get certified up to 1% total harmonic distortion, 933. Nicely over the rated power. Uncertified up to the clipping point. 979, 14.27. Dynamic, just as the other tests have shown for the Class D section, we don't get as much as we got 
the other test, but still right at a little over 900 watts is still very good. All right, so there you've seen all the tests we've done. You can pause here and see the dyno sheet with the results, but overall, as always, with the Rock for Fosgate amp, we got the rated power plus some. And yes, all the channels were loaded during all these tests. That makes it more impressive when you see these numbers here. Now we decided to do is show you guys the guts. And I didn't have any idea that taking this thing and getting to the internals was going to be quite as difficult as it was. Had to pop off a lot of plastic and be careful because this is, you know, 15 year old plastic on an amp that's known for the plastic to break. But I took one for the team. I was real careful, took out the screws, and we finally got it to the point where we could lift off this top cover. And you can see there's a ribbon cable there that connects to the VU meters. So we'll disconnect that, pull off the top cover, and we'll take a closer look at the guts here. All right, before we talk about the specifics of the internals, you can see all the different parts here it took to get it apart. And yes, you're welcome, but I do that for you guys. Here's the internals. You can see the board is kind of this silver color, very unique. Has the Rockford Power 1000 here. You can see the Rockford logo there. This is a custom design, of course. There's a 25 to life logo as well. And here are the engineers that worked on the amp. So it's always cool to have that. And you can see the size of it versus my hand. This amp is just huge. And then let's take a look and see the two different sections. You can see the class AB section on the far left. Class D subchannel section is at the top. And of course, each section has its own power supply and filtering caps and rail caps and stuff like that. All right, so you see the 25 to life Power 1000. Here is the original, or not the original, the original Chrome version Power 1000. This one is the Power 1000C. Some people call it the Terminator, but not all of these are Terminator editions. This one is not a Terminator edition because it would say Terminator edition down here in the bottom in silk screen. This is just a Power 1000C. You can tell that the chrome is uh, having a little bit of issues here with scratches and stuff, and also the silt screening is kind of coming off, but we can have that redone. But there's one more Power 1000 model. All right, there's the old, two old school chrome models. Here is the more recent T5, uh, T1000-5AD. Now that we've got all of them here, we've actually tested all of them before too, so you can check video description for links to all the different videos. Now, which one is your favorite? Try legal base. All right, here we 
we've got the 46 hertz tone on Tone Gem Pro. We got the MM1 hooked up. And we got the Power 1000 hooked up to the Savard 8. So let's try Burt real quick and see what kind of power we get. 46 hertz. Here we go. Five fifty five at two point five ohms. And here's SPL one thirty seven point four six at forty six hertz. All right, let's check the temp here on the Rockford. I know this side over here on the heat sink is warm. I could feel it. One twenty nine, one thirty. It's getting hot in here. Yeah, one hundred and thirty degrees. Yeah, it's kind of warm, but the heat sink is doing what it's supposed to do. That's right, the Power 1000 25 to life, beautiful amp, does its rated power plus more, you know, kills the subwoofer, sounds great on the high, mids and highs on the four channel mode, just an awesome amp. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, commenting, liking, patreon.com slash old school stereo, check me out, till next time, Big D, I'm out of here! All right, here we have the Power 1000 25 to life powered up. We've got it hooked up to the Gately Audio acrylic box with the Lord of Bass 12 inch sub. And we got some cheap uh, mono price speakers here for the front uh, left and right. We got the amp bridged. You can see here the four channels bridged down to two channels. And those are going to the bookshelf speakers and then the subwoofer channel is going to the subwoofer course. So let's play some royalty free stuff from YouTube and see what we got here. So you may or may not have been able to tell, but the bookshelf speaker here was actually sliding down the box due to the bass. So pretty cool. But yeah, I just want to give you guys an idea of what it sounded like. I know you can't really tell over YouTube how it sounds, but I can tell you it sounds great. Very powerful amp here. So yeah, very nice. Rockford Fosgate Power 1000, 25 to life. All right, so let's try the Power 1000 again. Savard 8s are hooked up. They're wired at one ohm, but you can see they're measuring three ohms right now, but let's try another song here. Point nine ohms. Amp is getting hot. Ooh, I can feel the heat.